And now walking into the Clark Schlesinger is uh, a studio and public painter, lives here in San Antonio. His paintings have been exhibited throughout the U.S. and Europe, reviews in magazines such as the New York Times, Art Forum, and Milan. He also lectures at museums and schools. He's published articles and essays, and for the last five years, he has completed some really cool stuff. A number of large publicly and privately commissioned paintings, including a couple of bridges on the San Antonio River, a 1.2-mile streetscape you might have seen, and a 380-foot streetscape sidewalk and adjoining concrete wall. Please give it up for Mark. to reveal life 
under the bridge in unexpected ways. And I wanted people to bathe in the moving, reflective light by day, and the subtle glow from the concrete by night. I wanted to connect the warmth, the light, the color, and the structures in a space that felt like an intimate chapel. For the person who might be sitting, walking, jogging, biking, even floating under, I hoped it would become a place to meet, congregate, and socialize, and a place to discover and explore. With this project, I realized the power of public art to reveal a place where one can experience a presence of self and an awareness of physical and psychological connection to others and to the environment. The space becomes a place that we share and become responsible for. More recently, I got to work with structural engineers to design a new pedestrian bridge as part of the Mission Reach expansion of the San Antonio River. It's right down the road from here, below the old Lone Star Brewery at Roosevelt Park, near the old CPS power station. The covers on the bridge connected to the sky and clouds overhead, the water flowing beneath, and the planned ecological rehabilitation that includes native flowers blooming along the riverbanks. Absorbed into the design is an expression of change, from painted blocks of color in natural daylight to painted blocks glowing at night, from season to season, as plants of different colors bloom and die, from year to year, as the blocks age, patina, and take on new layers of color. Walking on and over the bridge, from one side to the other, the space that once was only inside of my studio paintings has expanded. The viewer is no longer standing parallel and vertical in front of the painting, looking into the painting. The viewer is now actually in the painting, on it, under, over, and alongside it. The mood has changed. The physical relationship is altered. The psychology of feelings is shifted. Our loneliness is lessened. Another painter, Jessica Stockholder, has also expanded ideas first explored in the solitude of the studio to the larger world. Simply put, in the studio, Stockholder uses both traditional and untraditional materials to break and open up the rectangle. She pushes the space of the painting off the wall, even onto the floor, where the painting and the viewer are grounded. In her outside public work, the painting has been exploded in scale and literally even sometimes serves as a stage for community gathering. In my view, successful public painting is ultimately a thoughtful antidote to loneliness. It is not a nightclub where one hangs out thoughtlessly to be thrilled cheaply. It does not need to assault or persuade. Instead, it invites and provokes thought. It respects the sight of the viewer, and it rewards the viewer's close looking and careful thinking. The suffering of loneliness is cured by our awareness and our acknowledgement of that which is around us all the time. Making public art in its most creative is a social activity from the beginning. Sitting at the table, as I did with this project, discussing how the city can be built and what city is being built. In other words, the artist has a role and insight different from all others. It is not for the rigid individualist, but for the flexible modest, who has the largest of dreams as to what a place of grace and mercy looks and feels like. In doing the public work, creativity has a social function, and because of that, the creators have a place in the world. But what about the painter in the studio? Solitude must be embraced for experimenting, discovering, and creating. It allows ideas to develop that will expand into site-sensitive public art. In this way, the painter comes full circle, helping to create a world expressive enough to rescue us from loneliness and give social function to solitude. Even as the public experience is compressed back into my studio, and the next paintings are to be made. Where in San Antonio? In San Antonio, yes, sir. And why would...
would someone, I've heard this from young people getting into the arts, why would someone who established art reputation in New York move to San Antonio? Um, because at some point there's, there's no reason to stay in New York. New York is an immigrant city. You go there, you make your money, and you leave. <laughs> and compared to what I found it 14 years ago, how is San Antonio now, especially for public art? Oh, for God's sakes. I, I think I've lost about eight years of my life. I don't know how this has happened, and I'm just very glad to be here and to see such energy in so many people. And you have a website where people can find out more about you. I do, and it's under my name. It's markslessinger.com. Simple, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.